if one of the twins felt sick and uh, uh, or died or passed away, immediately the other twin was murdered. I scream. I have nightmares. How? How could could someone take parts of bodies and put them into jars? I really couldn't comprehend it. It was the first day of the day. With the gun, 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 with the gun. They opened the doors of these Catholic cars, and I remember who was alive went down, and all the dead people just just fell off. And I remember I trod on these dead people like they were stairs. Of course, immediately to line up for the selection, which was almost always performed by Dr. Mengele. It was his baby. They were looking for twins. And my mother, she thought if she will say that she has twins, they will take her away from her. They will, they will take us away from her and she will never see us again. So she didn't say anything. But this woman who came to take her suitcase said, twins, uh, it's, it's a good thing to have twins in this place. שם ראינו את דוקטור מנגלה, שאנחנו לא ידענו איך קוראים לו, אבל זה קצין נאה. והוא עשה ככה ימין, השמאלה, אנשים הלכו, אבל מהר מאוד הוא שאל איפה יש כאן תאומים. אמא שלי אמרה, פה, פה. אותנו לקחו. מנגלה stood there like a lord, like, like... I don't know if... He thought he was, he was a god or what. He stood there uh, with his white glove. Right, left, right, left. Mengele came and he decided to send me to the left and Miriam, my twin, to the right, which meant I was supposed to go to the crematorium. My sister, my elder sister, Hannah, when she realized that, she bent down on her knees. But she begged, she said, since we were twins and we have never been departed till now, she begs him to leave us together. And when Mengele heard that we were twins and I had already been gone, towards the crematorium, and I walked, and I got quite close to the crematorium. I could, I could see the, the, the fire coming out of, through the chimneys. I could even feel the uh, burnt flesh. Only then I began to realize that I am probably going to that place. But all of a sudden came in an SS man uh, and they, they pulled me out of the line and brought me back to Mengele. Aval, who badak, cool. חלק 
מהאצבעות, עיניים, צבע עיניים וכן הלאה, מה דומה ומה שונה. עכשיו, אומר, אמרו כבר שהוא רצה לבדוק מדוע ישנם תאומים, נולדים תאומים, מפני שזה מין דפקט. מנגלה פרפורמט the most serious experiments, including uh, operations, including taking out organs from people without anesthetic. Um, he, the main part was maybe the exchange of blood between the, the twins themselves and others. They gave us injections to cause these boils, and they gave us other injections to get rid of the boils. So imagine how can a little child's body react to these traumas? You have no body, you have, you have nothing. Everything is his. He, he's, he's the master of you, of, of your body. weren't allowed to cry or weren't allowed to speak or to ask. And so we just uh, stayed quiet, awaiting whatever was to come. I was looking at a whole wall of human eyes. A wall, a wall of blue eyes, of green eyes, of, of, of brown eyes. And And those eyes, they were staring at me, they were staring at me, these eyes. And I couldn't cope with it. And I fell down on the floor. We were not left free. We, we've been uh, escorted. I mean, uh, there was a whole army walking together with us and driving us. It was January, the snow was very high, cold, without clothes, with the wooden shoes. We had to run and uh, not knowing where to, not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, so it, it was not, no, there was no feeling of being freed, no. The war was over for them. I mean, they, they were going to lose the war. And they, uh, they were in a very, very big panic. So they started to pour petrol on the barracks and try to demolish all the evidence. Suddenly there was a man, but not in those moments. שאנחנו הכרנו, זה לא המדים הגרמנים ולא ההונגרים, זה צבע שונה, אבל זה היה עם תת מקלע על ה... ואני לפחות, אותו אני רואה עד היום לפני, זה בערך בין 16-17. ואז כל הצריף הזה של אנשים, אלה שעוד יכלו לעמוד על הרגליים. אתה יודע, כמו רוסקי. בסוף, פעם, זה שראיתי פעם ראשונה חייל רוסי, אז כך שוחררנו. I saw a Russian soldier in the, at the door, and uh, he looked at me and he said, like this, he beckoned to me and he said, like, and I, I understood him. He said, film, film, film. They uh, brought these, these uh, striped coats and they told us to put them on. So they, uh, they uh, filmed, they filmed us, the children. And uh, they wanted to know what happened to us. They asked questions and wrote everything down.
My mother, I hear her voice in my ears, ringing, loud and clear. She said, Verele, I haven't got the strength. I am ill, but you, you are young and you must and you must and promise me you have to run to the highest mountain, to the peak of the highest mountain, and from there shout, and shout, and shout, and shout, as long as you can, what the Nazis did to us. <laughs>